You already know what it is. It's your boy Laid Back with another reaction, another review, another episode. A hey, conspiracy theories. You up to bat. It's your boy Laid Back. Welcome back to my channel. A hey, two things we gotta do. You gotta hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water, man. You already know what it is. Elevate more in 2024. Elevate more in 2024. We back with another TikTok video, man. We got conspiracy theories again. It's a new year. Same shit. I ain't gonna hold you up. We got a lot to get into. Let's go ahead and get into it. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Fire Squad was popping. Let's get it. Let's get it. What's happening with you know DC or politics or you know they're getting caught up in that level of the battle and they've now come to this conclusion that okay the maybe they're saying okay the left is you know has been infiltrated and taken over by the communists and they're trying to destroy America which is different than just kind of left versus right and you know I, I disagree with your policies but it's like the the next so there's been this mass awakening towards that level okay the media is fake news uh, big pharma is out you know to, to harm us there's been that level of awakening but what you're seeing is that the next level in the you're not about to tell me this dude on the right is about to predict what's gonna happen in 2024 who is this guy and why do he got a crystal ball let's go most significant uh, awakening for the masses is to realize that there is a small group of evil psychopaths mm -hmm. that are trying to control and kill the entire world you know things that you and i believe that we've kind of understood and awakened to that when that realization Before. hits the masses that becomes the trigger point. That becomes the tipping point in which all of their systems start to fundamentally collapse. Because once you see things from that perspective, you see through the schools, you see through the media, through Hollywood in a way that you didn't before. And you will no longer go along with it because you know what's ultimately there. So that's what you're seeing as a, a, a gigantic. It's almost as if like 2024 from here, what you're saying is that 2024 is when the Great Awakening hits the mainstream and the entire structure that the deep state has of this world is shaken to the core i'd say 2024 over the process of 2024 the great awakening eats the deep state it eats fake news mm -hmm. and we digest it the rest of that year and into 2025 and then we shit it out okay it's, it's last off Charlotte? Charlotte? Oh, wait, yeah. Hold the fuck up. Oh, hell no. What the hell happened to Charlotte? <laughs> you doing good, Charlotte? Charlotte? Oh, Charlotte? Oh, what the fuck going on in Miami, bro? Oh, shit, this shit just disappeared. Did you hear my man? Oh, holy shit, that shit just disappeared. Hello, man. I gotta get my man again. He said, "Oh shit, that nigga just disappeared." Charlotte, oh, boy, what the fuck going on in Miami, bro? Oh, shit, this shit just disappeared. Oh, oh, is this real? Hold up, hold up now. No way. He don't even notice nothing. Yo, this shit look real. He look like he about to disappear. Look. Come on, man. What the hell going on? Wait Here's until the end. Not happening right now across the globe. As of about three minutes ago, 7.15 Eastern time, 99% of the entire world's population is facing the sun. That hmm. means we're all experiencing some degree of sunlight at the exact same time, either full daylight or for a lot of other folks, twilight. If you look at the map right there, just the Pacific Islands and Australia, the, the Australian region, are fully in the dark. 99% of the world. And California. Poor California. <laughs> yes. You know what, though? What a cool phenomenon. 
one thing to bring us all together, literally to bring all of us together, because at this moment, I'm talking right now, 7.15, 99% of the population of I've the Earth is in some sort of daylight or sunlight. Now, this is due How? to the fact that the Earth has a tilt to it, 23 and a half degrees. So it's the way it's rotating around the sun and the way it's you know, or orbiting uh, in general. But right now, at this time in the calendar year, this doesn't happen every day. This only happens. Why is my man stuttering like this? And how in the hell is 99.9% of the world receiving sunlight if it's a globe? And how at an axis, 99? When? How do you get 99%? Happens today, and it only happens right now. 7.68 billion people are in daylight or in twilight. The only spots that are not in daylight right now are uh, Australia, Papua New Guinea, and New Zealand. Outside of that, the rest of the world is in daylight. Do you like that? Hey, man, do y'all think the earth is flat? I ain't never heard of 99% of the world receiving sunlight at the same time. How is that even possible? How? something that I learned from Colonel Philip Corso prior to his death when I was involved and he came forward as you all know wrote the day after Roswell he had been involved in some of the technology transfer and he had an experience out at the White Sands missile range back in the 50s pretty sure it was 1956 but I don't want to be don't quote me on that and he was part he was a colonel uh, he was involved in these projects there was an ET craft that came in daytime and came down over the range. What? He went out there with a couple of his guys. And this craft, it would be three-dimensional and then vanish like a heat wave, mm. like Stephen Digna explained, and then back again. Finally, it stayed. There was an ET that emerged, extraterrestrial okay. biological entity. And he said, the, the ET was communicating, please don't hit us with these radar. Can you get these radar systems out? You know, and, and we're asking, because you know, they were operational, of course, at that time, they were operational at Roswell. And being, he admits being a bra brash young, you know, uh, uh, Air Force Colonel, and he says, what's in it for me? <laughs> and the ET says, a new world if you can take it. Mm. Now, I was <laughs> one. No. First of all, this ET shit, extraterrestrial shit, getting crazy. You seen what happened in Miami? If you haven't seen it, when they sent all them police, I'm just saying, look into the aliens and stuff in Miami. Check that out. You know, I have uh, twelve grandchildren. <laughs> what kind of world <clears throat> are we going to leave them if we don't fix this problem? Because it involves peace, and we have to work towards contact that is in a peaceful paradigm. Mm -hmm. We've launched a very controversial project as I get attacked the most for, uh, the CE5, or Close Encounter of the Fifth Kind a Contact Program as sort of an experimental community-based outreach to these civilizations. 
we have had a number of extraordinary contact experiences. Mm. This is sort of a prototype that the French government during the presidency of Sarkozy asked us to demonstrate, and we set up an operation in France that was protected wow. where we did have events take place. Wow. I think we have to begin to ask, what can we do as a civilian government where we don't try to militarize and weaponize everything we don't understand. That's real. Because here's the problem. That's real. If you're a hammer, the whole world's a nail. And so we have to get this disclosed properly so that our brighter scientists, our academics, our political leadership, and our diplomats and the citizens can take the lead on this issue rather than an illegal and clandestine operation mm. that is a threat to national and world security. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to read the prophetic words that I received from the Lord today first, and then I will handle the old prophecy. So here are the words of the Lord. Okay. Insecurity will be the primary feeling in 2024. Insecurity. Insecurity, instability, fear, mm. doubt, and rage. The Lord says that people won't even feel anger anymore, which is a much more moderate type of emotion. Mm. He says that they will immediately feel rage, along with a growing sense of helplessness as events unfold at even faster pace than they did in 2023. Mm. People will be on edge more than ever before because the controls on this side of the control panel will be removed more than ever before. Mm. There will be less control over your money, your privacy, and your property, and travel restrictions will come back. The laws will be changed more than ever. Hold on now, because they talking about that, that, that virus coming back and the numbers rising. You know how that, that shit can affect the travel. Let's go. Before. Another thing the Lord said is 2025 is the descent into madness. Wow. 2025 is the year when everything will fall to pieces. The year when the wheels will fall off. So this piece of prophecy that the Lord has given here is almost as a support to the message that I'm about to go through, the message that I'm about to read. And God says that the... Whoa, cut her ass move off, didn't it? So, I decided to watch the book of Eli for the first time. And then I seen this picture that said 2024. What could it mean? I ain't never seen that shit. Government conspiracies that actually turned out to be true. Make sure you check out part- Uh-oh, that actually turned out to be true? Part one about the heart attack gun. In this video, we're gonna talk about the dead baby project. Now this was called Project Sunshine, which is a really messed up name and you'll realize why after I tell the story. So the original theory was that the government was stealing dead bodies to do radioactive testing. Mm. And the truth is, the government was stealing parts of dead bodies. But they specifically needed young tissue, so they were stealing from dead babies. These were all recently deceased babies or children and they would take samples of their tissue and sometimes even their limbs. Each of these were collected without permission from grieving families. Wow. They did this to over 1500 grieving families. Wow. It could be more, we'll just never know. That's real. What? Conspiracy theory that turned out- what It's just Trump awfully mean? good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. <laughs> what did she do? I don't know. You leave it in the comments what she did. Ain't this you? is why exposing the truth is scary. People who expose the truth. One of the most amazing things that I have ever seen in the bottom of the ocean. It was while filming for Blue Planets in the Gulf of Mexico. I noticed there's something out in the distance, couldn't tell exactly what, but it looked like a dark band. And as we approached it, the dark band became a donut. I saw this donut, it was black in the center. What 
Crazy. What if I told you the universe does to how to escape the matrix is because we all have certain amount of reincarnations. We have certain amount of reincarnations to get this thing done right. If we don't get it right, then we will be stuck in the matrix. Schedule your appointment to learn how to break the rules of the matrix. Hmm? That seemed a little out of ordinary. Yo, you want to see some real shit? Sure. But weird as fuck. AI. That's predicting who the president is, cause this shit is crazy. Watch this shit. Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Both of them the president? Or is that not Joe Biden? That was motherfucking crazy. Facts. So that wasn't Joe Biden. I'm Back sorry. in 2005 was Joe Biden telling America. What happened? <laughs> this is one of the wildest conspiracy theories I've ever heard before. So there's this book called Baron Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey, which was written in 1893. The story is about a boy named Baron who lives in Trump Castle. And Baron became bored with his life of luxury and decided to go on an adventure. And on this adventure, he was being guided by a man named Don, who helped him find a time travel portal in Russia. Then the same author wrote a sequel three years later, and he titled it The Last President. The main plot of this book was about a wealthy man who lived on Fifth Avenue in New York City that decided to run for president. Then shortly after he wins the election that no one thought he could, he's inaugurated and he selects a new cabinet member by the name of Mr. Pence. Then after his inauguration, since no one thought he would win, people erupted into violence mm. and people started to riot and damage property left and right. So here's where it gets really weird. Nikola Tesla, who had claimed to have figured out time travel, had about 80 trunks worth of his life's work. When he died in 1943, the man responsible for collecting all of his work was an MIT professor by the name of John G. Trump, Donald Trump's uncle. And get this, after John Trump died, there's rumors that Donald Trump inherited Tesla's work. So the theory is Donald Trump used a time machine to travel into the future where he saw Hillary Clinton win the presidency, which then led the U.S. into a complete collapse. So he traveled back in time, decided to run for president to try to save the country. What? All right. No more Internet today. What? Do you guys believe in time travel? That's something I don't know. Oh, that's a little too far out there for me, but. He just said Nikola Tesla just said he time traveled and was good at it. Y'all let me know, man. As tragic as the recent school shooting was, um, I just want to point something out that you all can do whatever you want with this information. These are the shoes that the uh, shooter entered the school with. These are the shoes that were on the dead body. What? Well, I felt that way for a long time. And then I see my big face on that movie screen with no makeup on and my natural hair color. And I'm like, I just gave it away. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I have always liked shapeshift. So this is one of Oprah's favorites. She says it's a miracle fountain of youth and her magic wrinkle cure. So I'm gonna put a little on your hand. I do that, Oprah did. Yeah, it, Oprah did it. All right, so here, we're gonna rub how, it right in. How come it's red? Put your... I sh I'll show you in a sec, Steve. So this is made from growth hormones of human foreskin. Look, force the wrinkles have just disappeared. <laughs> human foreskin. I can't even ball my hand up. 
Yeah, but so, so it's made from human foreskin. <laughs> They are cells from baby foreskin. Does that make sense? What? Bro, don't put that shit on me. What the hell? I'm gonna tell you guys a true story on how me and David Spade met. I was at my weekly Illuminati meeting. I was sitting next to Beyonce and Jay-Z. And all of a sudden, my boy Spade walked in right after Drake walked in. I was like, yo, Drake, move your little bitch ass somewhere else. I gotta talk to Spade real quick. And then we burned two truckloads of money and did some devil prayers. I sacrificed four goats, three chickens, and one sheep. And then we just, yo, chopped it up, whatever. We was like, hey, be in this video, bitch. We went to catch had some lobsters with chicken blood. I still have the t-shirt with the chicken blood on it. I think it's a Drake t-shirt. She lying like hell. Or maybe she not. So you can make a fast exit if you have As to. soon as you and I finish, You're out I'm here. leaving the country again. Why? Because in a very short time, not today, not tomorrow, but very soon, we'll be facing compulsory vaccination under the mistaken term of voluntary vaccination. Now, what is it about these vaccinations? You think that they're bad? Well, first of all, let's start with the fact that the World Health Organization has decided that we have 90% too many people. The World Health Organization has been working since 1974 on vaccines to create permanent sterility. Doctor, wow. the response is going to be, you're crazy. How can you say this stuff? I show them the documentation. No, oh. this is pretty shocking. This process has already been ongoing. To make matters worse, we know. We know what? We know what. Not a leaked footage from a ritual. The hell? You won't catch me there. For sure not. No way. Did you guys know that on September 3rd, 2023, there's supposed to be the biggest hurricane in history to hit South? Florida. I'm terrified because I live in Miami. Hopefully it doesn't happen. Stay tuned. Did it hit or what? Scariest predictions for 2023. The United States will also be facing another civil war. However, unlike their previous civil war during 1861 to 1865 that fought to end slavery, among other tensions of the time, in 2023 it will be a political war between Democrats and Republicans. This prediction first appears in his 1555 novel, and he hasn't been the only seer to predict it. That being said, however, he is probably the most well known psychic historically, so this foresight is most commonly attached to his name. Nostradamus was not clear on what the exact cause of the 2023 civil war will be, but he does say that it will last for an extended period of time and that it will be very violent. I want to talk to y'all for a minute about the power of perceptions. You see, there's a lot that goes in to being a hot social media content provider. For instance, don't think I got time to go on vacation? No, I got social to do. Come on, man, this is blue screen. In fact, I'm gonna keep it 100 with y'all. I haven't looked like this good in years. Mm. I've been totally computer generated since like the 90s. What? You know what? This ain't even real blue screen. You gotta send it to us. It's 2019, y'all. Pay attention. Nothing's real. Wow. That AI shit is crazy. That shit. Is What's crazy. happening to all the people that's vanishing around the world? Did Jesus come back? They said Christ died and came back to life in three days. Just how they sent off the national alert on October 4th, October 7th, the war started all over again in three days. Now people are saying that they hear trumpets coming from the skies. Are these from the angels? So now people are sitting around waiting for a savior to come back and save us. No one's coming to save us. Matter of fact, the one that do come is not going to be Christ. The same ones that cause all the pain and suffering in this world, they're going to be the ones that come back and fix everything. They said that the devil come in peace. So when someone come back to this planet and fix everything, people going to think it's Christ. I want people to forget about the image 
in the background and focus on the heart. Why is the heart surrounded by thorns? Not only that, look at Christ's head. It's surrounded by thorns. Why is this? These thorns around his head is a hidden message letting us know that our brains are really in the prison. Same with the heart. The heart is wrapped in thorns. Our heart is in the prison. They try to tell us certain things in little codes. They don't want to give us the truth because if everyone knew the truth, it wouldn't be this way no more. We are really in prison. What a lot of people don't understand is when they speak about Christ or the son of God, they are really talking about the son. This is why they are trying to block the sun out. And not to mention October 4th, we are going into a solar eclipse. The moon is about to block out the sun. This is what they mean about the three days of darkness when the moon actually eclipses the sun so we can't get solar energy. There is no one Christ. It is a consciousness. It is a group of all of us. We are the sun. If you can't understand the true meaning behind these stories, it's going to always be a fantasy. Just like they said when Jesus or the son of Christ was walking on water. Was the son really walking on water? Yes, the son was walking on water, but it wasn't a person. If you pay attention, that really looked like a walk path for the son. <laughs> hey, he going in, ain't he? Buddy going in. Proof we live in a stimulation. I said stimulation, simulation. something like this drop it in the comments i ain't never seen no shit like this never leave the war behind might have just predicted 2025 now one of the main vocal points of leave the world behind it's a Wi-Fi blackout, and guess what's going to happen in 2025? A solar storm, aka mm. a Wi-Fi blackout. Now, what are we going to do in this time? Who knows? But in the movie, you'll see people repeatedly trying to go on their phone, knowing that there's a blackout. Mm. And something else that you might want to take from this movie is... The world ends. Everybody predicting this world ending shit. It honestly blows my mind how nobody is talking about this. Okay. Russia made a terrifying underwater discovery that changes everything. The discovery and thinking about the probability of it being an actual crashed UFO or not until the Ocean X team gave the information that confirmed the crashed UFO. Whoa. Stefan Hogeborn, a professional diver with Ocean X, confirmed it when he said that the crashed UFO still works. He Whoa. said anything electric out there, including satellite phones as well, stopped working when we were above the object. Bro, I watched the video about wow. this and they're literally claiming that they discovered a crash UFO underwater. That's the UFO, weird. also known as the Baltic Sea Anomaly, is its striking resemblance to the Star Wars Millennium Falcon. Bro, what do you guys think about this? And whether this is real or not, you have to admit that the ocean holds plenty of mysteries that are yet to be discovered. But hey, make sure to share this video and follow me if you like this type of content. I'll see you guys later. Let's get it. Shout out to him, man. As of January 1st, 2023, the following things will go into effect, and people need to be aware of this. It abolishes cash bail for almost every offense. This includes, but isn't limited to, kidnapping, armed robbery, second-degree murder, drug-induced homicide, aggravated DUI, threatening a public official, and aggravated fleeing and eluding. Offenders released on electronic monitoring have to be in violation for 48 hours before law enforcement can act. They could almost drive to Alaska before we can even look for them. It denies victims their constitutional rights, 
and keep this in mind, businesses and homeowners, officers will no longer be able to remove trespassers from your resident, residence or your businesses. Someone could decide to live in your shed, and all we can do is give them a ticket. Wow. You have to decide what level of force is required to remove them. Wow. And whether or not it's legal. This is a massive threat to the residents of Orland Park, Cook County, and Illinois. Wow. You can just live in a the shit. They don't like human beings. In their history, in their teachings, the Andromedans say that they were taught that this universe was here for them. That they were left here and told it was theirs to rule. But when they started traveling, they ran across other races. And they were able to conquer many of those races. And how they conquered those races was through genetic altering. Now, our government, the United States government, the world government, the new world, whatever you want to call it, wants to implant everybody. Do you think what he is saying sounds credible or just a bunch of lies made for entertainment? Mind you, this was filmed in the 90s and it has been almost 30 years since this was filmed. Put your idea in the comments below if this sounds credible or not. TikTok, this is for entertainment purposes only. Extraterrestrials, they can't be bothered with that stuff. That's, those are toys. That's not permanent. You can always lose the hand. It can always burn out. You could always die. And extraterrestrials, they don't value gold or silver. They value genetics. So what they do is they will come in, conquer a race, and genetically alter it. And it is the genetics that they put inside these races that alters their frequency, their sound, their thoughts, everything about them. Apparently the Greys were much more human looking at one time. They, as a race, were captured approximately 893,000 years ago. According to Moranay, the first thing they did was they slaughtered almost all of the women. The reason they do that is to control the birth process. And what they did was they started to genetically alter the women, the females of that race, so that all the children born after that were genetically altered. I don't know who the hell that dude is. And I don't know where he getting that information the from. The latest predictions crazy. from The Simpsons for 2024 are genuinely eerie. This one is absolutely disturbing. In season 24, episode 9, Homer Simpson is preparing a bunker fully stocked with provisions for his family, anticipating something dreadful on the horizon. Shortly after, a solar superstorm strikes Springfield, a silent, invisible tempest sweeping through the town, causing severe consequences. This catastrophic event leads to a complete shutdown. No internet, no electricity, everything comes to a standstill. A solar superstorm could wipe out the internet for weeks or even months or even forever. The portrayal of a solar superstorm in the episode aligns with the potential real-world impact such an event could have. Interestingly, NASA has recently made a shocking discovery, a massive hole in the sun called the Coronal Hole. This what? hole, large enough to engulf 60 Earth-sized planets, is Dang. currently releasing solar storms at a staggering speed of 1.8 million miles per hour and could wow. be headed to Earth fast. The last time the Earth experienced such a storm was in 1859. It was known as the Carrington Event. The 2024 solar storm is predicted to be 60 times more powerful than the 1859 solar storm, possibly wow. the strongest ever recorded in history. Such solar storms can have catastrophic effects on Earth, affecting satellite power grids, GPS, and potentially wiping out hard drives and the entire internet permanently. Might mm -hmm. take decades for us to recover. It's only a matter of time. This shit sounds crazy. Have you ever wondered why there's a naughty and nice list for Santa Claus to evaluate children? Mm -hmm. It seems like a kind of propaganda to encourage kids to behave better, right? Let me share something fascinating. In certain regions like Northern Asia and areas near Siberia, they have a unique tradition. Instead of the familiar Santa Claus, there's a different version, a somewhat sinister one. This character is also called Santa Claus, but he's not the good one. He partners with Krampus, a winter demon. Together, what? they visit children to determine if they've been naughty or nice. If deemed naughty, Krampus steps in to deliver some form of punishment. The dark twist to the Santa Claus tale dates back to the 1600s in a play called Robin Goodfellow. Robin Goodfellow, the main character, is portrayed as half man and half goat. Interestingly, Robin was a medieval term for the devil. Here's the kicker. His signature laugh is ho 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 ho, which is precisely where Santa Claus got his distinctive laugh. So the wow. whole concept of the naughty and niceless Santa's laugh, and even the origins of Santa Claus tie back to this intriguing play from the 1600s. It's a unique journey that adds a touch of mystery to the holiday season. That shit gave me chills. I ain't even gonna lie.
He said the ho, 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 ho. Have you ever wondered why the Anunnaki are not mentioned in the Bible? This is a mystery that has puzzled scholars for years. Mm. The Anunnaki are ancient deities believed by Sumerians to have created humans, yet there is no mention of these powerful beings anywhere in the biblical texts. Some theories about their omission include that the authors were simply unaware of Mesopotamian traditions featuring the Anunnaki. The Bible was written solely by Israelites with no external influences. It's also possible their story contradicted biblical monotheism by involving other gods and human origins alongside Yahweh. Meanwhile, the Anunnaki myths predated the Bible by centuries, so may have been forgotten by the time biblical books were composed. Intriguingly, figures like the Nephilim have been interpreted as potential veiled references to the Anunnaki, or religious authorities may have deliberately chosen not to mention other supposedly potent entities in order to consolidate authority without risk of rivalry from potential competitors. So in the ongoing debate between history and faith, the absence of the Anunnaki from the Bible remains an enduring enigma. I've definitely heard of the Anunnaki before. Let me know in the comments. Did you know The Simpsons predicted a dark winter of 2023? An episode from season 33 that aired in January 2023, apparently foreshadowing something. Okay, so this is 2023 shit. They talking about The Simpsons in 2023 predicting some shit. Let's see if this prediction came true because it ain't 2023 no more called a dark winter coming to America. In the episode plot, the Simpson family finds themselves snowed in at home as a massive winter storm blankets Springfield. However, news reports indicate the freezing weather is not limited to just their town, but much of the United States is experiencing record cold temperatures, snowfalls, and dangerous ice storms. Grocery stores' shelves are empty as people are ordered to shelter at home. More intriguing is that the episode aired only a few months before winter 2023-2024. Could it be predictive? Even more unsettling is that dark winter is a term previously used by government officials and pandemic experts to describe a hypothetical crisis scenario involving a combination disaster. Dark winter was a term from after 9-11, picturing a U.S. smallpox attack. Now, with COVID, high costs, food and energy shortages, social fights and worse weather from climate change, some fear, a crisis like the one shown in a Simpsons episode hitting America. Only time will tell if the theories about a truly dark winter in 2023-2024 bear any credence. Let's wait and see. Ooh. Ooh. How would you like to be my crew? Go away with two. For context, this came out in 1934. What exactly was happening here? At first, it looks family friendly, but then things seem to take a strange turn. For one instance, she seems to be pulling down her dress a lot. It could be nothing, but if you look into her interviews, things become apparent that there is more than meets the eye. TikTok, this is just for entertainment purposes only. One guy, when I left Fox, I went to MGM for one picture. Thank goodness, only one. And when I got there with my mother, we were separated. And I went into the office of Arthur Freed, and he was going to talk to me about a, a movie he wanted to put me in. I'm 12 years old, you know. Instead, he was an exhibitor. I'd never seen anyone make before, except myself. So I had no clue about what was happening. So it struck me so funny, I laughed at him. And he got infuriated. And he said, out, 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 go. So Did you I, tell your mother? Well, I, she came up very quietly from Louis B. Mayer's office, and we walked in and... Shit. I don't even want to hear the rest of that. That's some weird shit right there. This might surprise a lot of you, but I actually wasn't. Leave the World Behind is undoubtedly a movie that you're either going to love or downright hate. My final thoughts after finally watching it last night is that I honestly love this movie. But a lot of people expressed in the comments that they were very confused and didn't understand the ending. Luckily, I think I do. And there were a lot of subliminal messages that you guys might want to know about. So here are a few of my theories, as well as the symbolism that I caught throughout the movie. But first, a warning. This video is definitely going to contain some spoilers. Hmm. So save this video and come back later if you still haven't seen it yet. So let's start off by talking it. about Rose Don't and Archie, as well as what they're wearing. Rose, the 13-year-old daughter, was wearing a NASA t-shirt when she started to notice the strange things happening around her. 
and of course, she wanted to explore more, being drawn to the woods as well as that house on the hill. In my opinion, it's definitely giving NASA and their curiosity, as well as their purpose of space exploration. While on the other hand, her brother Archie was sporting the Obey and the Rockstar t-shirts. And as you've seen in the film, Archie was very much distracted by, I guess, his temptation, and basically didn't take Rose's concerns seriously. In my opinion, this is possibly speaking to the typical teenagers and young adults in our time. You know, the ones who would even know what Rockstar and Obey are. Mm. I'm theorizing that these kids are the symbolism of the two different types of people in the world. Those who are distracted by their addictions, their vices, their temptations, mm. and those who see what's happening and want to find out more. Or escape altogether. Speaking of escaping, the ending definitely reminded me of those people who prepared to go to another planet once they heard the world was ending. And that might have been back in like 2011. But Rose basically said, I'm done waiting for help. I'm going to enjoy my last little bit of time on Earth. And she really left them. But let's back it up and talk about another thing that I noticed. One of the first incidents that happened in this movie was the white lion ship crashing on the beach. But did you know the white lion was actually the name of the first ship to bring abducted and enslaved Africans to America? Wow. Specifically to the English colony of Virginia back in 1619. Wow. Maybe it was symbolism of what was to come later on in the movie. And I'm talking about the tension between Amanda and her two unexpected guests at her vacation rental home. I'm thinking that it represents the racial biases and tension that's happening in our real world. Because Amanda could not believe that two black people could have owned that beautiful mansion, <laughs> regardless of how much they proved that it was theirs. And she clearly did not want them to stay there with her and her family. Mm. Not until everyone let their guard down. Amanda and GH bonded over a few drinks and music, and Clay and Ruth shared a vape together. And not until they could let that bias and tension go, were they able to have a productive conversation about what could be happening? Before I dive deeper into the musical symbolism as well as the ending, I want to talk about one other message I found. And this one is obvious. It's technology. This is a basic one that most people should have picked up on. Throughout the entire movie, there was symbolism of how distracted we are with our phones and our devices, mm. and also how we feel useless without them. Mm. Clay getting lost driving on the road, Rose not caring about the state of emergency that's going on and just wanting to watch friends. Mm. Everyone the entire time checking their phones or trying to use their devices knowing there's a blackout. It mm. speaks to how reliant we become on technology and how many people will fail to know how to function if we lost it all. Mm. And speaking of technology, let's talk about the record player. Considering what was in the gift box that Netflix sent to me, and all the different times that it was placed on screen, for example, the driveway to GH's house, Clay's t-shirt, which had its own meaning within itself, and the mm. vinyl library within the home, it's clear that the record player symbolizes something. Music is known to bring people together around the world. Mm -hmm. We bond over it every single day. So I have to think that it ties into an idea of friendship and togetherness. Because that was the only time that GH and Amanda actually got along. From the beginning to the end of the movie, friendship and togetherness was referenced. Especially mm. with Rose's obsession with the show Friends. Some speculate that this is connected to something deeper and darker. Considering Matthew Perry's tragic passing as well as Doja Cat's recent release, referencing the show, I get mm. why people say that, but I'm not too sure. I tried to look into the specific episode that Rose was super obsessed with. And here's the basic synopsis that I found. The six friends prepare to part ways and set out on the next chapters of their lives, with momentous events and surprises in store. GH, Ruth, Amanda, Clay, Archie, Rose, six people. I'm thinking mm. that they were hinting at a part two, especially considering the ending. But unfortunately, we will not know until they tell us. If you look at the context clues of the three situations at the end, you could probably guess why it is so significant now, and maybe even what might happen next. First, Clay, GH, and Archie are trying to get help from this overprotective gun-wielding man. And it's because Archie is now very sick. Isn't that a little strange, the one who was distracted got hit with sickness first? And in my mm. opinion, this man definitely represents gun enthusiasts of America, especially with the red maple tree outside of his house, symbolizing protection, strength, and also him sporting the cowboy's hat, which are clues in itself. If you don't know, that's Texas. Once GH and Clay pleaded with him and convinced him to help, they learned that he believes that it's the Koreans who are behind what's happening, 
whereas they think it's people from Iran, based mm. solely on the evidence that Clay retrieved in an earlier incident. But the man insists, claiming that his friend managed to get the same paper that they have, and concluded that it was definitely a country from Asia. So he suggested that they're all working together to dismantle the US. Mm. Once they get back in the car, GH has an information-heavy monologue, which basically states that it's very possible what the man said was correct. Every event that took place was planned and was all to lead to some civil warfare mm. where they will all end up tearing each other apart. Now, he wants to make sure that Clay will essentially stay his friend throughout this entire chaos and makes him agree that they will not turn their backs against each other, especially because things are about to go to sugar honey iced tea. Then we have. Bro, did she tell the whole movie? Damn. I don't plan on watching this anyway, but for the people that's watching, is she on point with this? Because she basically telling the whole movie. Like, this is like a movie breakdown times two. We have Amanda and Ruth, who clearly disliked each other throughout the entire movie. But when it came down to the terrifying event with the deer in the forest, they ended up working together to get out of it, which ended up bringing them a little bit closer which also could be accredited to Ruth's vulnerability when speaking to Amanda about how she feels. And at the same time, they find out the chaos that's happening in the city. Now, finally, Rose. She was just the overall message. All she wanted to do was see the season finale of Friends. <laughs> but here's where I think that this all ties together. It's the final episode of Friends, so maybe it's tying into what GH said. A civil war is upon them. There is no more friends. Everyone is fitting for themselves now. Mm. And that's basically what Rose did anyways. Even after hearing her mother calling her name, she ended up going downstairs and finding a bunker with plenty of food and water. And did she go back upstairs to tell them about it? No. She mm. selfishly sat down and finished that final episode. And that was after she consumed all the food that was inside of the kitchen. <laughs> Clearly a reference to gluttony. Mm. Oh, in conclusion, the ending is brilliant in my opinion. First of all, Rose's anxiety about finding out what happened at the season finale of Friends was recreated at the end of the movie. But this time, we were Rose and we wanted to know what happened to these six strangers that we spent two hours getting to know. Mm. And second, this all ties into the whole theory of this revolving around togetherness and friendship when there's chaos. And the only way to have that friendship and togetherness is letting those guards down, letting mm. those tensions and biases go, and real. being able to communicate with each other. That's right. I have to give this movie a solid 9.5 out of 10. Honestly, I love the dialogue. The cinematography was beautiful, and the soundtrack was a personal plus for me. As you can see, I was diving deep into this movie. I see. And I could be wrong about some of the details. Some of it might be a stretch, but clearly it was an interesting watch for me. If you've seen it, I definitely want to know your thoughts. So let me know in the comment section. She gave the whole movie up. I don't need to watch that. So he went and snuck in to this place where like former presidents go. There's yeah. a photograph of, it's uh, Ronald Reagan with Herbert Walker Bush and a couple other people all standing around. And it's like, these are the people that used to hang out at this place and they would put on robes and they yeah. would worship an owl god, an owl god and they would burn an effigy. Here. And they're playing, and, and Alex snuck in and made video footage of this shit. And then no one's denying that it's real. This really did happen. They're, so they're in with these bankers and former presidents, and they're dressed like druids. Yes. And, they, and some guy brings over something that it's an effigy that's supposed to be a body, a wrapped up effigy. It's also a bunch of sticks in, bl in a blanket, but it's like shaped like a body. Yeah. And then they drop it on the fire, strange. and they're all worshiping an owl god. Why is that bad? Uh, imagine if you saw oh those, God. if that's what your business is. Just finding those things. How crazy do you think you First of all, wait. Owl. Then you add in vodka and head wounds. Wait, 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 hold on, wait. Go to the vodka and head wounds part. What's out, Jones? Okay, I got you. A lot of vodka and you had a bad... He broke in where? And did what? Do you know why Prince, the famous rock star that was a friend of mine, do you know why he called himself the artist when he came back? He calls himself the artist because that's what they call us in our contracts. Mm. Oh, these contracts are crazy. You should hear the terminology they say in these contracts. To use your name and likeness and perpetuity throughout the universe. Who the fuck could possibly know what that means? 
Nobody does. Do you agree with what he is saying? Could there be a darker side to these contracts that these artists sign, or is Dave Chappelle making it up? TikTok, this is for entertainment purposes only. It's so complicated, in fact, that when you're a kid like me, you have to hire somebody to tell you what that means. And you sit down at a table, and you do the contract game. And that's how I got with Comedy Central. I signed a contract. But I signed the contract the way that a 28-year-old expecting father that was broke signs a contract. I was desperate. I needed a way out. And it wasn't good money and it wasn't good circumstances. But uh, what else am I going to do, I said. And all these white people sitting at that table told me, trust us, Dave, it's a good contract. And I looked around the table and they all seemed to agree it was a good contract. But what if... What if it was like that game of three card Monty? What if they were all friends and I didn't know it? Mm. Mm. The game. Mm. All right, so that was TikTok conspiracy theories, man. Um, it was a lot of stuff in there that was choppy. So I don't know what was going on with some of the videos, but it was a lot of stuff in there too, talking about seeming like What's going to happen in 2024? Power outages, Wi-Fi outages, uh, civil wars, um, presidents, um, a whole different level of survival. That's what it sounded like. Of course, they're talking about the aliens. Like I said, if you haven't heard about that, the stuff that happened in Miami, talking about the aliens that was or creatures that was at the Miami uh, mall look into that um this stuff is weird and then the old school with the uh the little girl singing and the dudes and and then the conspiracy theory that proved out to be true when the government took like 1500 bodies and was baby bodies and was this stuff is just super creepy super weird like these conspiracy theories be having my mind just thinking about like what the hell is really going on but if you made it to the end you a real one for real and drop that in the comments till next time man self love and positivity fire squad I got you when you know it hey